Here's problem 8-9. A 7 kilogram block on a horizontal frictionless surface is attached to a light spring, force constant 1.2 kilonewtons per meter. The block is initially at rest at equilibrium position when a force of magnitude P acting parallel to the surface is applied to the block as shown. When the block is 8 centimeters from the equilibrium position, it has a speed of 0.8 meters per second. How much work is done on the block by the force P as the block moves the 8 centimeters? Alright, so let's see what's going on here. We're pushing with a force P, and the block is going to move from an initial position of A to some final position B. And we're told that that distance is 8 centimeters. So that's going to be 0 0.08 meters. Okay. When it reaches point B, the block is going to have a velocity, and the velocity is going to be equal to 0 0.8 meters per second. So that's our velocity at point B. Our velocity at A is going to be zero, because we start from rest. Okay. Normally, if we have a work type question, we might consider the force times the displacement, or the dot product between the two. Work in this case would be equal to the force P times the distance D times the cosine of the angle between them. So that would be P times 0 0.08 cosine of 0 degrees, which is 1. It's 0 0.08 times P, but we don't know what P is. So we can't figure out the work that way, at least yet. So let's try a different method. We know that the K constant is 1.2 kilonewtons per meter, so that's 1,200 newtons per meter. And let's uh, apply the one equation to rule them all. So the kinetic energy at A plus potential energy at A plus any work done along the way should equal the kinetic energy at B plus the potential energy of B. So the question is, the first question is, which if any of these terms might actually be zero? We started from rest, so our velocity at A is zero and our kinetic energy at A is zero. Our potential energy at A, uh, the spring is unsprung, it springs at equilibrium position at point A, so there's no spring potential energy. And if we define our gravitational height, as being the height of this plane at zero, then there's no gravitational potential energy at A as well. So that's going to be zero as well. We're going to have work done by P, so we have to worry about that. We have uh, kinetic energy at B because we're moving, and the spring is going to be stretched at point B, so we're going to have potential energy at point B. So the other terms are still there. So the work on the system is going to equal the kinetic energy at B plus the potential energy at B. The work on the system is strictly done by the external force P, so that's what we want to find. So uh, let's calculate this. This is one half mass times the velocity of B squared plus uh, one half kx squared. No mgh because we've already defined our level as being zero level. So this is one half the mass, which is 7, times the velocity, which is 0.8 squared, plus one half k, which is 1200, times x, which is the distance we moved and stretched the spring as well, which is 0 0.08 meters squared. So what is this? This is 2.24 plus 3.84 which gives us 56.08 joules. So the work done by the total work done is 6.08 joules and that is actually the work done by P because that is the only external force that is doing work as we move from A to B. So the work done is 6.08 joules. If we really want to find out what P was we could uh, reverse engineer um, from this formula over here 
and we would find that uh, P should equal the work done divided by 0 0.08. I'm just curious, what is that? 76 newtons. Nice to know. It's extraneous information in this problem, but um, nice to know. Work done by p force P is 6.08 joules. <laughs>